And everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Monday here on this program, and that means tonight is Monday Night Raw. And tonight on the program, Monday Night Raw is going to feature the return of John Cena. I'll talk about more of that in a minute. Obviously, the top SummerSlam matches, if you haven't figured it out already, it's Roman Reigns versus John Cena. It is Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg, who's expected to return on the show tonight. It is Seth Rollins versus Edge. And if you watched the show yesterday, probably a Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal match. And I guess we'll see who Charlotte Flair is going to face at WrestleMania, since she is the new WWE Raw Women's Champion. That title changed hands last night. The Usos beat Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio to win the tag team titles. Nikki Ash won the women's Money in the Bank, and Big E won the men's Money in the Bank. Edge did not win the title. (laughs) Kofi Kingston sure did not win the title. Not only did Bobby Lashley beat Kofi Kingston, but man, he smashed this poor guy six ways from Sunday. So if if you've appreciated everything... Uh, You've seen out of Kofi Kingston over the last month, and you were hoping that he would maybe not win the title, although I advocated for him winning the title. Bad day for you. Set up man for Bill Goldberg here in the year 2021. So we'll talk about the show, all of the matches. There's a lot of good stuff on the show. Some questionable things as well. It's WWE. Sure, it'll be the same on Raw tonight. So that's the plan for today. We got news as well. And we're going to take your feedback. 425-780-7566 is the number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Elver is on Twitter. Lots to get into today. Back in a moment with more Wrestling Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi is going to be joining us here today, but I'm not sure about video. (laughs) He's currently a brown... Well, anyway. What hey, God's name is going on here? Hey, guys, remember, by the way, when there was a lot of concern that John Cena was going to come back and people were going to chant about Taiwan? Yeah. yeah. Well, it didn't happen last night. Okay, so here's the thing. I want to get into a lot of things today. We got Money in the Bank to talk about here and news as well. And uh, I don't like to repeat my material, but, I mean, I'm going to be talking about this one, I'm sure, for years. Why in God's name do we have a brand extension? Why do we have Raw and SmackDown and people are restricted to brands? And, like, it totally doesn't matter. So, a couple of stories here. They announced today that Naomi is going to SmackDown. Hmm. Because why not? I mean, it's obvious why. I mean, her husband is there. And, quite frankly, I mean, I don't know if this is why. But if it were my company, I mean, I'd want her there to drive him around when they go on the road. But anyway, she's going to SmackDown, and then they announced today that John Cena, who returned to the company last night and had a stare down with the SmackDown champion, he will be kicking off Raw tonight. It's like, what's the point of this brand extension? Literally, the the only thing that it does is make everything more difficult than it for everybody. We have to have the same matches on the shows every week. Like, talent's not allowed to switch sides. I don't even know why. It's the same GMs for both shows. John Cena just goes wherever the hell he wants. No draft, but Naomi's just going to... It's like, whatever. So anyway, yes, John Cena returned last night, and he had a stare down with Roman Reigns, who beat Edge in the main event of Money in the Bank in a 33-minute match, which was a very good match, but would have been better at 23 minutes, because every promotion worldwide has decided, we need to make matches go 40 minutes now for some reason. I have no earthly idea why. But Roman Reigns beat Edge... Uh, John Cena appeared. John Cena told Roman Reigns, you can't see me. And right now, Roman can't see him because he's going to be on the Raw show. So that was the first big return. The other big news is that uh, Kofi Kingston was absolutely, positively... Remember when he was the champion and Brock beat him in like seven seconds? And everybody was in an uproar about how Kofi lost in seven seconds? Bro, he would have been better off seven seconds last night. Because instead, he got beaten for seven minutes. I think he got one move, and then he was beaten and smashed and humiliated and killed and violently eviscerated. Seven straight minutes. Then he was submitted clean in the middle of the ring. And this is to set up in 2021, Bob Lashley versus Goldberg. And listen, I got nothing against Goldberg. 
But, like, bro, did you guys watch Kofi on this show? What a fantastic baby face. He was the second most popular. It'd be one thing if he came out for the match with Lashley, nobody cared. He came out, he was probably the second most over guy on the entire show. Everybody loves him. He's a great promo. He's a great worker. Like, he's everything that you want in a top baby face, except I guess he's too skinny or something like that. So he's just a setup guy for a big muscle man to come back and face Bobby Lashley. I do not see things going well for poor Goldberg. Like, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But, man, I think this guy is just going to get it from these fans. So that was that. We had Charlotte Flair beating Rhea Ripley, which has sent uh, otherwise level-headed people into, like, an uproar of insanity. I saw these people in the chat going, Oh, now we're going to have to listen to Brian tell us that Charlotte is really good. Well, she was really good. She was awesome in the match. Now, if you want to say that this was her first great match since she came back from her last hiatus, you're welcome to do that because she's had a lot of performances since she came back that weren't all that great. But, man, she was great last night. Rhea Ripley was great. They had a great match. Charlotte Flair beat her because, of course, Charlotte needs to win 16 or 17 titles. It's just a story. You can get mad about it if you want, but you got to deal with it. That's what they're going to do. So Charlotte Flair wins the Raw title. And we'll see who she faces at SummerSlam. Big E won Money in the Bank among the men. This was a very, very good match. The women's match, not quite as good. But they had some they had some cool spots in there. Nikki Ash won that one. AJ and Omos, total baby faces, which we've been talking about for months now. It's like nobody... I shouldn't say that. It's patently obvious that uh, AJ and Omos should be baby faces. It was patently obvious at WrestleMania when the crowd saw them as baby faces. It's a baby face act. A small high flyer and a giant that doesn't sell. I mean, hello, what universe are we living in where these guys are heels? Not this one, because they're baby faces. So they beat the Viking Raiders to retain the titles. And then uh, in in the opener, I mean, it's talking point, but it's talking point everywhere. Uh, They had a guy that just got a DUI, and now he's one half of the tag team champions, beating Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. I mean, I guess the only positive is... You know, they beat, didn't beat Ray and Dominic on Father's Day. They gave him an extra month. But uh, the Usos, new tag team champions, they won them on the pre-show. I don't know why. And uh, I guess Mike here, represented by... Uh, hey, Jared, put that one up right there. That's going to be Mike's representation today. Wait a second. Wait, hold on now. Well, fix your camera, brother. Otherwise, that's what you're going to get. Well, I am. Jared just emailed me a new link, and during the break, I'll reset and figure out what click happened the with the Click the link right now. Here. What are we waiting for? You just click it. I- I am clicking it, you fool. I'm trying to get it going. Obviously, I'm having a problem on my end with the computer. I am much more relaxed and much more evened out than that picture would indicate after seeing the show last night. Very skeptical. What did you think of this show? I liked it a lot, actually. I thought it was a really, really good show. And the fans obviously made a big difference last night, as they have been with these shows. I thought it ended perfectly with Roman Reigns. Oh, Oh, we got another picture of you, but it's frozen. That's uh Is that current? That's uh it's, it's a little bit more no, that's not current right now at the moment, but a little bit more into to how I feel right now as I I ponder about put, the show Jared, last night. Jared, put the other one back. What'd you change it to that one for? There well, we go. Well, you st- go ahead. Anyway, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, look, John Cena coming back was an awesome moment. I don't care what brand he's on. He's going to appear on both shows because he's John Cena, and you should probably do that. Same thing with Brock Le- with uh, Brock Lesnar, if he were to come back, but certainly Bill Goldberg as well. I am not bullish on Bill Goldberg and uh, Bobby Lashley. I've said that repeatedly. I was not bo- big on your idea about Kofi Kingston winning either. I like the way in some ways that Lashley ran through him if he also runs through Goldberg in the same way and ultimately faces Big E. That's what I really want to happen. I think that's what people would want to happen. I think that's a storyline that actually tells itself very nicely. Naomi, I want to throw this in there. I don't know. Obviously, they're going back on the road. That's another reason to have her with her husband. I can start seeing people align that way. Certainly by the time October rolls around and we do the the full draft or whatever it's going to be there. But Naomi maybe being inserted into the Roman Reigns storyline somehow to keep that going because 
look, you got a long way to go before The Rock comes back, and you're going to want to keep those people tied in together for a long time. Does she add a dynamic to this? Is it time to belt up Naomi? I, I don't know, because one name you didn't mention at the beginning when you were talking about different matches for SummerSlam was Bianca. And when Sasha Banks comes back, which I can absolutely see her doing this Friday, when they do that whole split thing from Cleveland and from Miami at Rolling Loud, you know, does Sasha come back? Does Sasha come back and, and make an announcement that she wants Charlotte? I would figure on Friday it would be, you know, Bianca. That would make the most sense because they have a rematch. So at least you got a lot of you know, questions coming out of this show and a lot of intriguing things, whether you like them or not, because I'm with you. I don't think there's any way Goldberg goes into buildings with people. And other than the initial pop that his entrance gets, he's going to get killed. All right. Here's the update for tonight. The Raw show. They have opened up more sections and they have a current capacity of 9,000. And the last update from WrestleTix.com, there were 500 tickets left. And so this show is going to almost assuredly sell out tonight. So almost 10,000 people in the building. Last night was a sellout. Uh, Fighter Fest Night 2, which is AEW coming up on Wednesday. They are currently uh, 400. They've added 484 tickets, so they're adding tickets as well. And uh, their new capacity is 6,000. So that is likely to sell out Wednesday as well. So at least for television right now, everyone is doing very, very well. And we're going to see how the ratings do. Obviously, the AEW show on Wednesday did great. SmackDown uh, did exactly what we predicted they would do, 2.2 million. Maybe 2.3 million by the time the final numbers come in. Raw is almost assuredly up as well. We'll talk about that and so much more after the break. Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. He is still a uh, photo for the time being. we got a bunch of different photos. Maybe we'll scroll through them here as we get going here. Oh, yeah, I bet you will. Yeah. You know, the funny thing about these photos is uh, none of them are candid, Mike. You did every single one. Every single picture we put up here, you willingly did on video. So I don't want you to yell at me about this. I don't choose the pictures anyway. That's all on Jared. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Throw him yeah. under the bus. There I, we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so listen, everybody. I want to make a, a quick note here that uh, yesterday, well, Saturday, there was the Impact Slam Slammiversary show, and they taped some television yesterday. And we got a report from the building that said that uh, Don Callis did a promo, and in his promo, he said that Impact Wrestling wanted Kenny Omega to defend his championship at Resurgence on August 14th. That's the New Japan show, okay? August 14th. Now, I believe this is the same day as Triple Mania, August 14th. So that obviously begs the question, is he going to somehow wrestle in California and then fly to Triple Mania? Is he not going to do Triple Mania? Like, what is going on here? So what is going on is that Callus was misheard. What he actually said was that Impact wanted Kenny Omega to defend his title at Emergence, which is different from Resurgence. <laughs> That's where the confusion came from. There's apparently uh, an Impact Emergence show. There's a divergence in... Uh, there was a divergence in the Emergence. Uh, so, yeah. yes, that is what's going on here. He is not working the New Japan Resurgence show and Triple Mania on the same day. He will be working Triple Mania, and he will be working Emergence, which is not Resurgence. Got it, everybody? He okay. won't have a, a Resurgence with New Japan until he faces Jay White. He's going to face Jay White at some point, bro. And lose. That's inevitable. Hey, I want to mention, if you've enjoyed the show here today, and how could you not, <laughs> what a lucky day for you. It is oh, the yeah? it is the final day. We did, we did one more day. It was Friday only, and then we decided to add Monday because fans came back at Money in the Bank and fans also come back at Raw tonight. And so what better opportunity to bring fans back to WrestlingObserver.com. So if you go to the front page of WrestlingObserver.com or you go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez, you can get a full month of unlimited access to all of our audio programs, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Figure Four Weekly, 
our award-winning board, all of that, unlimited access for $3.99 a month. And I was, uh, I've done a lot of different plugs. I want to do a new one right here. So if you sign up, you get 20 new podcasts every single week for members only. So if you have a favorite podcast, you can get a new one every week. Imagine getting three new podcasts in a day and 20 brand new podcasts in a week. And you can pick and choose which ones you want to listen to, obviously. So you also, in addition to those, get every show we've ever done dating back to 2005, which consists of over 12,000 shows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take $3.99, which is what you pay right now, and I'm going to divide that by 12,000, which is the number of archived shows, and you are basically paying 0.0003 cents per podcast. Can you imagine this deal? So... If, for example, you think about all those people that signed up in 2009 and they got all of these shows from 2009 until today, well, can you imagine that for $3.99, you could sign up and you could listen to all of those shows that they paid hundreds of dollars for for $3.99? So I would not miss out if I were you because you will deal with something called regret. If you wake up tomorrow and you decide, oh, I can't take it anymore, I've got to sign up for WrestlingObserver.com, and you, you go, oh, I missed it by a day, the three ninety nine sale, what a fool I was. Well, don't be that fool, my friends. $3.99, full month unlimited, all 12,000 podcasts, 20 new shows a week, Lance, Storm, Dave Meltzer, Filthy Ford Daily this afternoon with Filthy Tom Lawler, myself, obviously, a uh, random picture of Mike, uh, so many different things you can listen to as a subscriber. So do not miss out WrestlingObserver.com or my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. Should we see what is on everyone's mind? Yes, we shall. This person says it's 2021, but John Cena last night finally got the insanely nuts 100% babyface reaction Vince dreamed of. Roman is just 10 years and a couple of mainstream movie projects away. You know, people have asked before, and there were a couple of people on the uh, chat that asked this, and they're basically like, well, you know, what happens when we run out of all these Goldbergs? I won't say the other thing they said, but, you know, what happens when these old people aren't around anymore? Well, the answer is they're going to bring back the people today, and they're going to be the new old people. Because whatever you think of the wrestlers in WWE today and their star power compared to Steve Austin and The Rock, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fact of the matter is, there is, I know it's hard to believe sometimes, but there is a new generation of fans that are growing up, and these people are their heroes, okay? You ever listen to an interview with, like, Tegan Knox, and they ask, like, who, who is your favorite wrestler? And she says, Kane. So, you know, if she were, if she were not a wrestler now, and she was just a fan, can you imagine five years they're going to bring back Kane Tegan Knox would be over the moon. Or Rhea Ripley talks about when she first started watching wrestling and she was, a, she was like a big fan of The Miz. Like, there is a generation, not mine obviously, that looks at The Miz as this giant WWE legend. And if he disappeared off TV for two years and came back, people would go nuts for that guy. It's the cycle of life. Yes, in their time, Steve Austin, The Rock, Mick Foley... They were all massively bigger stars to the mainstream than the people today. But to the audience, and the audience is what you're trying to please, you know, there's going to come a day in 10 years where people are going to look back fondly on, oh my God, it's Kofi Kingston, and holy smokes. Look at look at the uh, reaction that uh, Johnny Drip Drip got at Money in the Bank last night. We bring back fans, and it turns out that the guy's so entertaining that he was one of the most popular guys in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. That's just the cycle of life, everybody. Which, by the way, you there, Mike? Now he's totally gone. What are you talking Where where am I? Where am I right now? Oh, my God, he's back. There I am. All right, you have anything to say about that, or should I just keep rambling? Because I can. I can go all day. All right, I'll be happy to. So let me tell you what I learned last night with the return of fans to uh, Money in the Bank. Because I learned a couple of things. Okay. What's that? Well... I learned that a few people are painfully underutilized. Some of these will be surprises to you. Ricochet. 
Mm. I would I would say as an as a paid analyst of professional wrestling yes. that they should do more with Ricochet. I concur. Yes. I also learned that Johnny Drip Drip. Yes. Whatever you think about his pairing with Miz and everything like that, I mean the guy is super charismatic and yeah. the gimmick is over with these fans. This man also might be underutilized. All right? Maybe. Yeah. I'll tell you what I learned. I mm-hmm. learned and this one was interesting to me. This one I did not expect. I always rant about how we see the same thing on SmackDown every week. And I always say the exact same thing, which is Roman Reigns and Jimmy and Jay, they do the same exact thing every single week. Like, virtually nothing ever changes. It's just the same thing over and over again. But I like everyone's performances. I think they do a good job. How many times have I said that? Many. Well, how interesting that they do one of their normal segments backstage in front of live fans. And there's people screaming, boring. So that was interesting. That I did not expect. Alexa Bliss. You know what I learned last night? What'd you learn? Nothing. The gimmick (laughs) sucks, okay? And what I learned watching the fans is that what these fans want to see is Alexa Bliss the wrestler. Because Alexa Bliss doing a ring entrance, Alexa Bliss doing spots, they were into all of that. As soon as she looked up and tried to use magic, as as soon as she hypnotized Zelina Vega, deadly silence. She did the gimmick where she runs and she leaps onto the ropes and does her goofy pose. Deadly silence. They don't want this stuff. And and the, the Thunderdome has been an echo chamber for 18 months now. Oh, let's do some stupid magic with Alexa. We'll hit that cheer button. Well, the cheer button's gone, and what we learned from a sold-out packed crowd last night is they don't care about that crap. They want to see her wrestle. They want to see Alexa Bliss the wrestler. I learned they couldn't figure out who was a babyface and heel in Rhea and Charlotte. I could have told you that. No. I did. I learned that AJ and Omos are obviously a babyface act. I could have told you that. I did. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was obvious. The funny thing is that one, we, we learned in WrestleMania. Because they had a crowd at WrestleMania, Brian, here's and they the were thing. total baby faces. You've said that over and over again because we all have because it was obvious. But the other thing, well, about it wasn't that was, obvious, Mike, because they decided they were heels. It, it's obvious, and the worst part is it was obvious without fans. You didn't need fans to tell you that AJ Styles, as entertaining as he is, and in the way that he has been positioned as the. The, he is still, you know, a bad guy, but he's been the funny bad guy a lot. Yes, he still performed in the ring, but he's been goofy. And him being paired with almost, I mean, you saw the reaction that he's gotten, you know, and, and how people have responded to him online. You had a feeling that this guy was not going to get booed. The thing is, he's just completely immobile. But the team itself, you didn't need a fans. You didn't need a focus group. You didn't need a study to realize that those two guys paired together were going to get babyface reactions. And almost being as limited as he is, he's going to get that Sid Vicious response. Because you know he's not going to do 10 minutes of mat wrestling. Almost is going to tag in and beat up somebody. I also learned that the fans don't appear to want to see Drew McIntyre tell wacky stories about the Loch Ness Monster. Your calls after the break, Observer Live. Here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. My God, the phone lines are packed. Are they now? What a show we're going to have here today. If you'd like to call, 844-913-2727. That is 844-913-2727. Text message is 425-780-7566. Let's get through these calls here. The lines are busy, which they are right now, because all five of our lines are... uh, they're full. Just keep trying. You'll get through eventually. Full up to here. Houston, you're on the air. What's going on? Hey, good afternoon, gentlemen. This is the building. Yes, uh, Mr. Ding. I, uh, <laughs> that's right. I uh, just wanted to say real quick that I've been a huge fan of the recent uh, fan shows for the WWE, but I can't help but feel that, you know, as excited as we are to see all the fans in attendance, the booking issues have yet to be resolved. It just feels like a fresh coat of paint on an old wall. Well, That's all I, I wanted to say. Thanks, guys. Yes, Mr. Ding. I want to thank you very much for the call. Well, it's been a show, so we need to give them a little bit more time. But I'm going to say this, everybody, okay? Everyone's going to go, oh, Mr. Captain Obvious here. Well, you all cried when I claimed that the shows would be better with fans. No, and some of you interpreted that as me saying that the booking was going to be better and the storytelling was going to be better. 
And I said that's not what I meant. However, no. however, however, I am now going to say that. Because let me tell you something, folks. You ready for this? The booking is going to be better. And the shows are going to be more exciting with fans. Why do I say that? Well, because we are in a modified WrestleMania period from now through SummerSlam. Because it is July 19th. We're about a month away from SummerSlam. They already have all of their top matches for the show. Therefore, they will be more focused than they have been previously in the Thunderdome era. There will be fans that will be reacting to people. There will be angles to set up these big matches. It ain't going to last forever. And I'm not saying either, by the way, that there are not going to be plot holes left and right on the show because there will. Because Vince is in charge. And as long as that guy is there, he's going to mess things up left and right. But for your Roman Reigns storyline with John Cena... For your Bobby Lashley storyline with Goldberg, your big matches that they have planned for this giant SummerSlam show, there will be better focused build than we have seen for these the matches that are thrown together and multiple rematches and blah, blah, blah in the Thunderdome era. Mark my words. Will it last? No. Once SummerSlam is over, everything's out the window. Will there be holes? Yes. Will it be better? It's going to be better. I think people were just mocking your optimism. No. Because you've been kind of a jerk sometimes. So that's why people never were, were doing that to you and, and maybe roasting you a little bit for it. But you're right about that. And I think it goes longer than that because we go into the fall season. And we go into season debuts. And we have football coming back. And we have the draft taking place. And we have Becky Lynch still to come back. So they have some positives at their disposal. Um, I don't know if Goldberg is going to be one of those, but we know John Cena is going to be one of those. Big E with the briefcase. People have not tired of the Usos and Roman Reigns. I know some people may have, but the majority have not. Edge, as we heard, may not be good for TV ratings. Who cares? And creatively, he's been very good, and you get that pop that you got last night. Seth Rollins, for anything anybody wants to think about him, is over once he gets in the ring. Nobody can understand what he is. The The interviews are ridiculous. But once he gets in the ring, he makes people better. He is incredibly good himself. So if you refocus on him, you have that. So they have these things, and they have motivation to keep going to SummerSlam, or not SummerSlam, excuse me, past SummerSlam into Survivor Series because you have football, you have, the, the again, the re-debuts on the networks, you have some things that can be shook up, you have people being called up to the roster. You have all the motivation in the world right now to keep that ball rolling. What does it say about your fan base when I try and say that things might be better and I'm just shot down? saying that it's impossible that things would be better. Well, you're down to what? One point? What was the lowest number that they had as far as diehards that tuned in? And granted, it was a holiday, blah, 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 but it was one and a half million people. So there's a lot of people who are diehards listening to this show that have lived through this so many times that are, you know, they know the deal already. That's how cynical that they are. And they have a good right to be. WWE has to prove it. AEW can make some slip-ups along the way. Other promotions can make some slip-ups along the way, but... You know, fans don't feel in the same way that they do with those other promotions as they do with WWE because they have been screwed over so many times. You have things pulled out from underneath you. You have storylines that go nowhere. You have personality changes that don't make any sense. You have personalities that you would not want to be anywhere near a zillion feet of, let alone, you know, cheer at on TV or even buy a ticket to. So... You know, they have a lot of advantages at their disposal, but they also have a lot of disadvantages, and they have a fan base right now that is completely cynical for the most part, and the ones that aren't, they're just kind of floating up into the clouds. Are they really that invested in your product? Yeah, they might pop for John Cena, but can they pick out anybody out of a lineup other than like three or four people? You know, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, them coming back is going to be good. But unless you can get some people moving and going, some Tony Storms, some Ricochets, some I don't care who the names are, you just pick some names, they have got to develop some stars because, yeah, John Cena can come back for the next 20 years, but we're still spinning in the same cycle. Grand Prairie, you're on the air. What's going on? You, you're on the air. Going once. 
Hello. Yes. Hello. There we go. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is Ryan from Plano. Um, I wanted to call in first and just say that um, I appreciate the show y'all are making during this pandemic. And now that it's over, thank goodness. But uh, y'all put on a great show during the pandemic to help get us through this horrible wrestling era that is finally over. Um, but second of all, I was at the uh, Money in the Bank show last night in Fort Worth, and the energy was awesome. And it seemed like the um, TV was also, it came through that just the fans were so energetic through the whole show. It was just really exciting. But, um, you know, the, the response for Big E in the building was unbelievable when he won that Money in the Bank contract. And, you know, I'm just hoping that they don't mess him up after what they did with Kofi and Bobby Lashley. I just don't want that to happen to Big E. So is that something that you worry about, or is that something where you think, well, Big E's different, it's not going to be like Kofi? Well, my friend, I want to thank you very much for the call. He's, his name is Big E, so he already has an advantage over Kofi Kingston and, uh, and Woods because they're not big. And if you watch WWE lately, it's like one big guy after another is getting a push. It's, this is what Vince does. It's Goldberg's coming in and... And Big Strong John Cena feuding with Big Strong Roman Reigns. We got Big E now wins the the men's Money in the Bank. So I think that Big E is going to be better off than what they did with uh, with Kobe Kingston. By the way, I just want to mention what? that uh, last week on Raw, I don't, think, I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but uh, uh, Woods, Xavier Woods pinned uh, Bobby Lashley. You guys remember that? Sure did. Think we're going to get a payoff to that tonight? Anybody want to so. take bets? I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing not. But maybe well, he'll go out there. Okay. You know, maybe he'll go out there and right. squash him as well, and then gold. What do you mean it's okay? Don't so beat the champion and don't yes. do a follow up. Whoa, whoa! Did I say anything about not doing a follow up? You said it was okay if they didn't do the match tonight. You gonna let me finish? You let me continue on here with why this it's, can make some yeah, sense? Yeah, let me tell. Let me hear it. He's got to beat Goldberg. Goldberg wins, then everything's out the window. Okay, Big E. And who has to beat Goldberg? Bobby Lashley. What does this have to do with Xavier Woods beating Bobby Lashley last week? Because here's why. You still got a long way to go before you get to January and Royal Rumble. If you're going to have Big E cash in the briefcase, do you think you'd do it before January? You would probably be aiming at that match for next year's WrestleMania. If not, it would be a big event like a Royal Rumble. You can still can have Bobby Lashley, once he's done with Goldberg, because Goldberg's not going to be a long-term thing, come back and go, oh, yeah, you know, I got one more thing to do, which is kill Xavier for defeating me in that flash pin. And you can bring that back any way that you want. You can have Xavier bring it back up. You can have MVP saying, okay, we got to check off these boxes. You know, what else do we have left on this registry we got going on here? Whatever you want it to be, you can have that happen afterwards now if they never go back to it yeah it was stupid and it didn't make any sense and it should have been kofi but if they go back to it at some point fine if it's not tonight that's okay too do you remember many years ago when uh oscar beat becky lynch at the royal rumble and then becky went on to win the royal rumble and do you guys remember when oscar got her uh her match against becky it was like 18 months later, okay? <laughs> like, bro, if if they bring she back Brock Lesnar in 2025 <laughs> and they do a match with Kofi Kingston, like, it's not like this was some sort of plan. Like, if Xavier Woods does not have a match with Big E tonight, then it's dropped. And the thing was useless that they did last Monday. Now, no. yes, in September or November or October, they could all of a sudden one day go, Oh, Jesus, we need a match for this guy. God, Dude, we got nobody. Oh, let's okay. have You think they got Bro. a plan? Oh, we're going to hold Wait this one second. off till October? Wait a second. What do they do after Goldberg? How long do you think Goldberg's going to be there? Do you think it's going to be more than one match? And even if it is, then what do you do after him other than Drew? Other, Which, no, it can't be Drew. So what else do you have? They have nobody else established. So, yeah, somebody's either going to have to move over in the draft to do it. Do I need to yeah, go back? Do, you, do I need to go back through the championship matches on pay-per-view for the last 18 months and find out which of those people were established? Established before they I, ended up being booked for a pay per view well, match. Had, you had Randy Zero. Orton. Well, you had Randy How was Orton. he established? Well, he's Randy Orton. So they didn't establish him. He just was there for well, 19 I mean, years. 
Woods. <laughs> when people go, who do they have established? Nobody. They don't well, establish they no anybody. Stars. You they know who have they have no for Bobby nobody. Lashley? You know who they have? Who? They have every male on the roster. Oh, because what they'll do after SummerSlam is they'll realize they have a September pay-per-view. They'll pick somebody out of obscurity, and they'll give them the title shot. Then they'll do Kobe. a rematch I mean, for uh, six straight months on pay-per-view, and then we'll go to Big E. That's what they'll do. How about do. Xavier? How about Xavier, then? Xavier would be the next one after that. Here's the problem with your theory, Mike. Yes, Xavier beat him last week. But you know what? Two weeks earlier, Bobby Lashley gave Xavier the epic beating of a lifetime in a Hell in a Cell match and beat him clean. So we just forget about that part of the story in this wondrous storytelling that they're doing? Well, yeah, because over time, they, of course, remix all of their stories and their video packages to make them say whatever they want to so they can say whatever they want to. But here's the thing. Do you think Goldberg's going to defeat Bobby Lashley? Because no. that move, because if that happens, everything truly is out the window. But other than that, if Bobby Lashley wins, the only person that makes sense, even bringing names back, that make any sense to me are Brock Lesnar, who they seem, who knows if he ends up getting slated for Roman Reigns, or it's Big E. And with Big E, you have the story of Xavier. You're still going to have the story of Kofi. That's when I would do that. All right, one more call here. Vince, you're on the air. Not Vince Russo. What's going on? Hey, good afternoon, guys. I just have a very quick question about Raw tonight. Um, Dave earlier today put out on Twitter that uh, the over-under for the demo on Raw is a .63, and that just that seems very high to me. And I was just wondering, A, what do you guys think the demo is going to look like? And B, do you know the last time they drew that high of a demo? Well, I want to thank you very much for the call. They did a .43 this week. I don't think a .63 is out of the equation, but that's why it's called over-under. So basically, Vince, you're you're guessing under. I will also guess under. Mike, over-under. Under. Under. All right. Hmm. Watch us all be idiots. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Don't forget the final... 12 hours of our, actually it's about 9 hours right now, our very special sale, a full month of unlimited uh, WrestlingObserver.com for just $3.99, 12,000 archive shows, thousands of archived Observer newsletters, figure four weeklies, 20 brand new audio shows every week, and if you download an app like uh, what do I use? I use uh, Downcast. Downcast. Yeah, Downcast is awesome. It's free. And uh, the RSS feeds for all of the shows are on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. You plug those into Downcast with your username and password, and they all get downloaded automatically to your podcast app. And you have a commute, going to and from work, you work out of the gym, you go for long walks, whatever you do, hiking, where you want to listen to audio. If you're a fan of pro wrestling, mixed martial arts, I mean, I swear to God, The Lord above can confirm you ain't going to find a better deal than this because I can't think of anywhere that is going to give you 12,000 archived wrestling and MMA audio shows for $3.99 anywhere on the planet or, in fact, the known universe. I almost made a Star Wars reference, but I'm sick of them. Bro, do you know how many words are in Dave's newsletters every week? And then if you have the archives... 40,000. Can you imagine if you multiplied all those over, out, how many words? Over a half million words easy. In fact, significantly more than that. Now Billions that of it. words. That's not billions, you idiot. You know anything sure? about numbers? 40,000 times 1,000 is uh, 40 million. Not bad. So anyway, we're out of time, everybody. I want to thank you all for listening today. I'll be back later on tonight. Filthy Tom Lawler, Wrestling Observer Radio later tonight. All sorts of great stuff. And uh, Twitch homies, thanks so much. Most of you, rest of you, get out of here. And that's it. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.